The spread between the 10-year treasury rate and the three-month treasury rate, often referred to as the 10-year three-month spread, is one of the most reliable leading indicators of business cycle recessions. The 10-year three-month spread has inverted before every recession since the late 1960s with virtually zero false signals, particularly in the last five decades. The only modern false signal occurred in late 1966. Today's yield curve inversion is historic in terms of depth, only rivaling the double 1980 recession. While the 10-year three-month spread has a near-perfect forecasting record, capitalizing on the information can require a painful amount of patience and discipline. In this video, we'll review the painfully accurate 10-year three-month recession indicator and highlight the wide distribution of outcomes for recession timing, stock market performance, and labor market data after receiving this highly important economic signal. When the 10-year three-month spread turns negative, you can be sure a recession looms in the future. But how far in the future? When we ask these business cycle related questions, the common answer is to use the mean or average of the historical range of outcomes. On average, a recession begins about 12 months after the 10 year, three month curve inverts. The average can help guide expectations, but the true range of outcomes is quite wide, with only a six month lead time before the 1974 recession and a 17 month lead time ahead of the 2008 recession. So today's lag of seven months is slightly less than the average outcome, but well within the historical range. Will this cycle be seven months, 12 months, or 15 months? Narrowing the range of outcomes is a quest set out to be accomplished by all market forecasters with limited success due to the inherent randomness embedded in markets and complex economic cycles. What about stock market performance? The same conundrum plagues investors because the final outcome is clear but the path to get there can be quite different, oftentimes with no logical explanation as to why. This chart shows the performance of the S&P 500 after the 10-year three-month curve inverts, with the bottom axis showing the number of months after the initial inversion. After the 10-year three-month curve inverts, the stock market almost always declines in the following two to three years, with a mean and median decline of roughly 14% over 15 months. Sometimes, like the 2000s recession, the stock market starts to decline immediately after the initial yield curve inversion, never moving higher. And sometimes, like ahead of the 2008 recession, the market can rally another 20% in the following 12 months before collapsing in the ultimate recession. To highlight the distribution of outcomes, 15 months after the 10-year three-month curve inverted, the S&P 500 was down 47% at most, and was up 12% at best, a 59% gap in performance. The average performance for the S&P 500 15 months after the yield curve inverted is negative, and the modal outcome is negative, but randomness still exists. As mentioned, on average the S&P 500 declines roughly 14% and bottoms about 15 months after the yield curve inverts. Today's S&P 500 performance is far superior to the average outcome, but if we look at the two most extreme cases, ahead of the 1974 and 2008 recession, we can again see just how wide the range of outcomes can be. The ending point for the 1974 and 2008 recessions were similar, a cumulative decline of roughly 50% after the 10-year three-month curve inverted, but one decline started around month five, while the other started around month 26. After the 10-year three-month curve inverts, it's just a matter of time before the labor market cracks and initial jobless claims explode higher. The same difficulty arises, however, when trying to narrow the distribution of outcomes down to the perfect monthly prediction. On average, the rise in initial jobless claims today is on par with the average trajectory post 10-year three-month yield curve inversion. But just like the stock market example, there is the 1974 case and the 2008 case, which took two totally different paths to end up with roughly the same outcome. The 1974 recession had many similarities to today's economic cycle due to the inflationary dynamics. And if we follow that path, jobless claims are set to explode higher in the imminent future. The 2008 analog would have a much longer lead time before a clear collapse in the labor market, not rising substantially until 19 or 20 months after the initial yield curve inversion. 
So in summary, the 10-year three-month spread is one of the most reliable leading indicators of business cycle recessions. Capitalizing on the recessionary forecast from this highly reliable indicator can be challenging without a longer-term view because the distribution of historical outcomes can be wide. Narrowing the distribution of outcomes and guessing whether this economic cycle will follow the average path or take a more unique path is a difficult proposition because of the randomness of markets, massive revisions to closely watched economic data, and subjective decisions by central banks and political entities more broadly. When using leading indicators or a business cycle framework, the benefits and predictive power is greatly diminished without the ability to embrace a bit of the randomness for the bigger cyclical picture.